Welcome to tutorial number 40 something of our tutorial series where I'm going to just mess around with uh, Grasshopper and try to make something cool. Um, I was thinking that we were doing quite a few of static uh, forms recently in these tutorials, so this time around I want to do something dynamic. And I was digging around different um, different plugins, and I came across a Firefly plugin, which uh, caught my attention. It's a pretty cool one, though. Um, so Firefly plugin uh, deals with Arduino boards, it deals with uh, computer vision, it deals with audio capture, and so on. So I was thinking that maybe we could use my webcam, and also we could use uh, uh, my audio, my microphone, to actually do something cool with it. Uh, maybe control some sort of a, uh, what you might call it, some sort of a wall system, um, some paneling system. So where do we begin? Well, <clears throat> I guess we could start with audio, right? So in Firefly, by the way, you can just get it from Food for Rhino, just any other plugin, just install it, it's gonna work. Um, it's a little bit laggy, isn't it? Well, maybe it's just me. Um, so in case of Firefly plugin, uh, we do have the audio tab here and we have four different uh, components. So let me choose frequency spectrum rather than sound capture. Uh, I believe that one is a little bit, gives me a little bit more uh, flexibility in what I can do. So frequency spectrum here. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, and this is going to be an awkward one because I will be testing. <laughs> I will be testing it out with my microphone. So if I do, uh, yeah, you can see that there are peaks here that boom, yeah, that react. Okay. So we have that. So let's see the outputs that we get. <clears throat> so the first output is. How many? How many are there? Um, list length. I would assume these are peaks. So this whole graph is divided up into like small portions, and this will output series of yeah, 198 peaks, right? So it's basically this graph uh, can be represented with 198 uh, numbers, and it seems to be a static number. So let me just write it down somewhere so that I don't forget. 198. There we go. All right, so we have that going on. Um, and these are very, very small numbers. To the power of minus 6, to the power of minus 7. Yeah, most of them are really close to 0, right? So we'll need to deal with that. So the second one is... Boom. Becomes, becomes smaller when I talk. I don't know what the second one is. That one is weird. The third one, boom, also becomes smaller. That's weird. I don't know. I don't know how to use this plugin. We are investigating it together. <laughs> so, okay, instead of uh, using other two plugins, let's use this one because this one is pretty straightforward. Let's see how it works. So, 198 peaks. Uh, let's do. Um, construct point. That is not how you write point. Construct point. And let's uh, do series of numbers. Uh, series for the y coordinate. So if it's one number for each of these x, y, z, that it just constructs a single point. But if we give it multiple numbers, such as uh, 10 numbers from, from this component here, it will give us 10 points, right? So let me connect them to, actually, to the x component, like so. Okay, so now we have 10 points with gap of 1 between them. And let me do, uh, yeah, that 198. Count 198. So it's basically what series is doing. It's counting from 0 until 197. So it's counting 198 times, and then it's uh, giving those coordinates to the construct point, which in turn gives us 
198 points, starting from zero, ending here. Okay, and then what if around each point I would create a circle? Uh, a circle C and R, center, normal, radius. So the center would be my points, and the radius would need to be my peaks here. How do you, also, why is this so laggy? I don't like this. Uh, why are you laggy? Let me minimize that. Maybe that will help. We'll see. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, uh, if I just plug it in like so, to like the peaks to the radii, radii it, would, it should still kind of work, but... Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> so it doesn't work. The numbers are way too small. Um, let's, uh, just to check, let's multiply. Multiply these numbers by, I don't know, 100,000. That's 10,000, that's 100,000. And feed that into radius. Whoa. Well, it does work. Let's look at it in the top view. Be very, very quiet. Boom. Okay, does work. Um, so we have that going on, uh, but this seems to be very uh, active, you know, very, very much uh, intense. So let's uh, ease it, ease it down a little bit. So how do you? When you have a bunch of uh, a bunch of numbers uh, and they increase or decrease so drastically, how do you um, soften them them out? Well, perhaps we could use uh, some math tricks. So let's say we have two numbers. One number is like 0 0.00, um, or rather 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and the other one is a hundred, right? So something very, very small and something very, very big. What if we use square root from these two numbers? So this would become 0 0.1, like square root of 0 0.01 is 0 0.1, and this would become 10. So it shrinks down the gap. So everything kind of starts moving towards 1. Okay, so we can use that. Um, let us use square uh, square root, and let us use square root on this um, on this output here, and then feed it into the multiplication. Oh yeah, and then we need to make a like a, have a smaller number. Hello. That, that really worked. <laughs> Let's try uh, multiplication by 100. Bum. Ooh. Okay, so we do have the, the whole spectrum. That's, that's nice. Uh, and it does seem to be softer. Now it's not so, um, not so intense. I still want to do some tricks with it, but perhaps we can leave it be for now and move into uh, move into the webcam part. Because here, um, at, at this point, this is fine. I know that I'm like I'm receiving audio information, and I can work with it as long as I can do the math with the numbers. So that that is okay. Let me just take all of this and disable the calculation of it. Okay, so now let's go to webcam. Uh, under vision, you can see, uh, under Firefly plugin vision, you can see a tool that's called video player, no, webcam video stream. Webcam video stream, let's grab that. Oh, there's, there's me. And you can see that, uh, like, I have this camera set up here, and I have a webcam here, right? So these are two different cameras. I wonder if my uh, my 
like big camera will break if I do um, if I do this. Yep, <laughs> that, that breaks it. So let's not do that. Or what, what if I do this? Nope. What if? Oh no! Did we crash it? <laughs> that was too fast. Yep. There we go. Okay. Hi. So now I'm here. <laughs> so that was a hard crash. Uh, I actually needed to restart my computer, but at least now we can see that uh, uh, the, the, this camera works and I can actually now zoom in. Hello. Like that. Super. Okay. Uh, so that works. What next? Uh, so the output that we get from here, Oh yeah, and we won't see my actual webcam here, but that's that might be pretty cool. You know that the tutorial is actually made by me talking in, in Grasshopper. Um, the output that we get here, if I check with a panel, is a Firefly bitmap. All right, what can I pause this? Yeah. Uh, so oh, maybe I can pause it on a fun more fun one, just, there we go. Um, <clears throat> so the output is a Firefly bridge, Firefly bitmap uh, data type, right? So it's uh, internal in, in Firefly, meaning that we can't just get uh, information out of it. That's fine. We can uh, grab from vision, we can grab some, uh, some other, tools from which we will be able to extract the information. So for instance, I can grab, uh, t -t 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 -t, where was it? Mesh from image, mesh from image tool here. And I can straight up connect bitmap to bitmap here. And now I can see myself in Rhino. Okay, so we have that. If I press play, I can see that it's it does work. And I even have uh, three dimensionality here. Whoa. Okay, that's good. That works. Let me pause the. Come on, just a normal one. Let me pause the the the, the view again. That's not a normal one. Just wait. I know. Let's let's do this. There we go. This should be good. Yeah, that's fine. So I can see that the mesh gets uh, higher, the brighter the pixels, which is fine. We can we can use that. We can use that to our advantage. All right. Um, there are a few more things that I want to do with the bitmap that comes from the webcam. Um, and those are like color correction tools and so on. So I will use, let me show you. Um, we can use, for instance, brightness and saturation and turn down the saturation to zero, like that, and connect the changed bitmap here. So now this becomes grayscale. Does it matter though? It doesn't really, huh? Okay, so we don't, maybe we don't need to use it. But what I definitely want to use is, um, where was it? Contrast. I want to be able to change the contrast of, of my image, right? So contrast multiplier, I can do 0.7 here. So I can mess around with the contrast quite a bit. And also I can take the brightness multiplier and amp it up to also 0.7, or rather less, no, more. Oh, it needs to be more than one, 1. 1.2, let's say. 1.2, and I can bump up the brightness as well. All right, so we are starting to get some, uh, some information here. All right, so we have that going on. We have a lot of control over the brightness, over the contrast, right? 
which means we can get away with a lot of stuff. Okay, so there's one more thing that I want to do, and it's here the capture is um, uh, at 160 by 120 pixels. I want to bump it up. I will not be bumping it up to full, uh, full frame capture. I think that is going to lag out. I mean, it looks cool, but it's definitely super laggy. So I will actually use uh, maybe 320 by 240 will not be as laggy. How is that? That is still pretty shitty though. Let's see, let's use less. 240 by 180. Yeah, this is something, uh, something reasonable, <clears throat> I think. Okay, so we have that. Let me, oh, that's zooming in. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay. Let me pause here for a second. There we go. And let's see what we can do with this particular image. If it works on an image, it will work on... Uh, uh, if it works on an image, it will work on the video, right? So what do I want to do with this mesh? Well, I want to get the, the brightness information from this mesh or from this image. And I want to use that brightness information to drive some sort of a um, installation sequence, right? So how do we do that? Well, first of all, let me disable the mesh preview and just play here so that you can actually see me. Hi, this is me. Um, first of all, let's build up a grid of points, right? So let me, again, use the same tool, construct uh, construct point there and let me in X uh, use X direction and Z direction right so it's going to be like a vertical grid so in X direction let me do um, how many do we do 72 no uh, that's that's a stupid number uh, 75 and in Y direction or in Z direction, let's do 50, right? So it's going to be uh, four by three, no, 16 by nine. It should be 16 by nine, if, I, if I'm if i calculating correctly. Like the, the, the proportion should be 16 by nine. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it needs to be something else. We'll see. We'll see if the proportion is wonky. Either way. Um, here, let me first draw a, a line of points, right? So it's the same procedure, series of numbers. Starts from zero, step size one, count 75 times, right? So we get the list of numbers. We plug it into X and we get this, right? A line of points. And then let me do series of numbers for the Z, like that and plug that one into Z, and you'll see that this, this happens, right? And this happens because it tries to interpolate the data. Let me have myself here. Now, now this is going to be awkward, but... <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe here. Um, so it's going to try and uh, interpolate the data, uh, and we don't want it to do that. So what we choose to do is we uh, separate each... Uh, value in Z coordinate into its own branch um, and thus every uh, every value here, here will receive every point from here so it should work. We will see. So to do that we just graft it and thus every point gets on its own branch and now we, we have a grid of points and actually a pretty large one. Uh, so let's start smaller. Actually, can I borrow um, like a working resolution from here? 80 by 60. Let's do 80. That's even bigger. No, 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 no. Let's do smaller. 40 by 30. If that works, then we'll do bigger. 40. Why do you beep 30? Okay. So we have this grid of points. And on each of these points, I want to create a... Uh, a hexagon, uh, a polygon, polygon. 
that's created around each of these points and the radius of a polygon will need to be the gap between the points which is one but actually half of the gap because there are like for every point there are two for every two points there are two polygons so they need to meet in the middle so it's going to be 0 0.5 right here just like that. And actually, I don't really need a data structure here from a dashed line. You can see that there is a data structure here. I don't need it. So I will flatten the output here. OK, so we have a bunch of polygons. And let me create a mesh from them. I'm not sure if it's, uh, it's the fastest way of how to create meshes, but I, I kind of use, use it this way. So I basically just connect mesh to, to polygons as long as they're flat, it just creates meshes for every polygon. Let me start hiding stuff uh, because it's in the way. And move my webcam here. <laughs> um, so we have a bunch of meshes here and I want to give them thickness. So I will use, I believe Viverbird has a nice little tool to thicken the mesh. Viverbird transform mesh thicken. Viverbird's mesh thicken. This this guy right here, connected. Ooh, that's uh, those are really thick hexagons. Five thickness of five. No, we just use 0 0.5. Not even 0 0.5. Maybe 0 0.1 for thickness. Yeah, something like like that. Small plates, you know, just small plates. Okay, and the way I want this to work is I want these plates to rotate according to the, the, the information that they get from my webcam, right? So how do we do that? Ooh, this is going to be rough. Um, well, they will need to rotate, first of all, rotate. Um, do we do rotate 3D? Yes, we do rotate 3D. So each of them will rotate. Oh, why are they grafted here? No, 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 don't be grafted, flattened. Single list, okay. Let me hide these. So they get rotated and they rotate according to degrees. So I right click on the angle and I choose degrees like that. And the center of rotation needs to be a center for each of these meshes, which I have right here, these points are at the center of each of these meshes. So let me do something like this, like that. Okay, so they will be rotated, they will be rotated around those points. Let's check if it works, uh, zero dot dot 90. So if it's zero, they are all open. And if it's 90, they are all open. Oh, because they rotate around the Z axis. If I zoom in and I rotate them, yeah, you can see that these, they are just spinning around the Z axis. So the axis of rotation needs to be X, unit X. There we go. So now this whole thing is closed. And if I move this, this whole thing is open. Cool. We have control. We do have control. Um, but of course, this angle shouldn't be in accord according to the, uh, to the slider, but rather it should be driven by my webcam. So let me move the webcam back here and pause it. Bah. Wait, pause button. There we go. Bah. Nope, try again. Bah. Oh, there we go. So we have that. And let me enable this. So we have a mesh. And the mesh has different heights. Actually, let me check one thing. Which one is faster to do? Um, is it faster to create a mesh and deconstruct the mesh? To get the vertices? and deconstruct 
the vertices to get the, 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 the vertex information. So that's 71, 5200. Uh, I can't do math uh, calculator. Whoa, that's a big boy. Uh, smaller. S smaller, please. Um, 71 plus 52 plus 146. 269. Okay. And what if I get from, 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 where are you? Where are you? Hello? Firefly vision. What if I get bitmap decompose, which basically will just give me RGB values? 168. So this is faster. Okay, that's interesting. So this is faster. So I can just use uh, either red, green, or blue channel because it's grayscale. We don't care which channel we use. All right. Or actually, let me play now and see. Yeah, definitely this one is faster. So let's not use the mesh anymore. Delete. Let's use this bad boy. Uh, let's pause the, the video again. There we go. Perfect. And let us see what kind of values we get here. So the values that we're getting are between uh, 0 and 255 because that's the RGB spectrum. Right, uh, minimum is zero, maximum is 100, uh, 100, uh, 255. So let me remap those numbers. Let's just go for a red channel. Let me remap those numbers according to bounds. Whoa, this takes a second to calculate. So I don't need to calculate bounds because I know for a fact that it goes from 0 to 255. That, that's a fact. Let me remap that like so. And my target domain is going to be the angles, right? So this is pixels that are completely dark and this is pixels that are comp completely bright. So if it's completely dark, the panel should be closed, meaning, let me create a panel, uh, the, those hexagons should be closed, meaning they will have a rotation of 90. But if it's completely white, the panel should be open. So the rotation is going to be zero. So from 90 to zero, like that. Values get remapped. Can I move? Is there a better way? Because this takes so long. Why is this taking so long? What if I disable and enable it? It still takes like one second to do. That's way too much. Is it because of uh, how many? Oh shit, yeah, right. 240 by 180, that's a lot of pixels. Uh, 240 by 180, that's 43,000 values. Okay, uh, so we need to downsample the image. I could just go here and choose 40 by 30 like that. And if I play, you know, you would see me like this. But I don't think that's, that's smart. I think the smart way to do it would be to still use a high rate. Um, high rate here. But then... to downsample it right after the brightness and contrast uh, alterations. So downsampling is also included here, and I don't really remember which one it is because I just briefly checked it out. So let's find it. Um, it's not that, not that. Image region, no. Replace color, no. Invert, convolution filter, no. Um, bitmap info, no. Decompose, decompose. Oh my god, come on. Convolution, no, no, no. Precise, precise bitmap. Uh, how did I miss it? Uh, resize bitmap. There we go. So I take 
the altered bitmap here and I need to resize it to these two sliders, right? Because this will drive the resolution of my wall. So it's going to be 40 by 30. That's how many points I have and that's how many pixels I need, right? And I then feed this one into uh, my mesh component here. And then suddenly this becomes 33 milliseconds. Great. And I can uh, then connect my remap numbers to my angle input here. Technically, that's all we need to do. Yeah, that works. Uh, front. <laughs> that actually works. Um, doesn't look great though. Let's see what we can uh, what we can tweak. So I will. What if I increase the contrast? Okay, increasing the contrast works. Actually, let's leave it as defaults and let me just press play here. Does this work? Hello? And you can barely see me there. Um, what if I increase brightness? That helps. If I decrease it, 1.7. I need to see, uh, yeah, I definitely need to see the image itself. So let me grab a mesh. Where was it? Hello? Mesh from image. There we go. Bitmap. Let's uh, both look at the front view and the mesh view here so that we can see better what the heck is going on. And also for this, let me just do um, custom preview, make this all pink, disable preview of this one. Or maybe a uh, swatch, uh, let's make this, it needs to be, those are dark ones, so it needs to be like that. Okay. So we have that, 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 and we have the mesh, and this is how it looks, and it gets remapped from 0 to 255, so it doesn't get clamped which is kind of okay, but maybe we want to have, uh, can we do a bounce, can we do bounce now? How long does bounce take now to, to calculate? 31 milliseconds, can we, I think we can do bounce. Wait, that doesn't change anything. No bounce with bounce. No bounce, bounce. okay, so we, oops. We don't use bounds, instead we use just a static panel. Anyway, uh, it does work. Let me press play and let's see. Ooh. A hand. Okay, that works. Super. I need a brighter background though, so let me just quickly how do we do a bright background? Can we just do a quick bounding box? Bounding box around our points? Or am I being stupid? Maybe we can just do a rectangle. Ah, let's do a bounding box. So I create a bounding box around my points. Uh, I right click on the bounding box component and choose to union the box so that it takes all of the points into consideration. I move the bounding box back right behind the panels. So I move it in Y direction by, uh, let's say, one by by one because panel radius is 0 0.5 so let's move it back by one and let's just give it a custom preview of uh, white color swatch white there we go okay so let me just say like group this say that this is my uh background Plate. So this is actually doable and um, achievable, and you can do it in um, you can do it with uh, 
actuators or, or motors, like small uh, stepper motors, uh, you could have this kind of a wall system that's being driven by Grasshopper uh, as an arts installation. That's why uh, I find it quite, quite interesting and quite fun, uh, quite a fun thought exercise. Let's press play. Okay, seems to work. Nice. Uh, I think we can deal with more resolution. Let's do... <sighs> How many? Uh, what's the next step? The next step is 80 by 60, right? 80 by 60. Yeah, let's, let's do 80 by 60. <laughs> Look at that stretching. 80 by 60. Like that. And maybe downsampling from 240 is a little bit too much. Let's downsample from 160. Press play. Perfect. Let's uh, look at it. So now I don't need to see the mesh anymore. I think the contrast is quite well balanced. And if I need to actually balance it more, I can just uh, adjust the camera settings as well. Let's look at it in perspective view. Perspective view, I said. Nice, wait. Can I get more brightness here? Uh, that's a little bit maybe too bright, but it does work. All right, that's super nice to see. And can we change this to, oh, we are already in wireframe. Can we change this to shaded? And let's see the depth uh, that it can catch. So let me just come here. And you can't see me. OK. But what if I do something like, what if I do something like that? Hello? There I am. Cool. That works. Good. Uh, so that part works. But now I want to also incorporate sound in, into this whole thing. Um, so we need to somehow do that as well. Let me pause the screen capture. Wait, let me grab a beautiful view of my face uh, with less contrast. Uh, or maybe we can do this. Uh, what if I increase brightness here? I mean, sensitivity here like that, and then we bump down the brightness here, 1.2, uh, like that. And we keep the contrast multiplier in check. Maybe we can, like point, point 0.6, something like that. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good, uh, there we go. I think that's a, that's a good balance. All right, so looking at, at it from afar, I think that's a, that's a pretty decent, you know, a pretty decent webcam. Ooh, frame rate is bad, but uh, keep in mind that I'm doing this on a really, like not, not, not the greatest laptop and also I'm uh, recording uh, as well. So it's taking away from the computing power greatly. Right, back to sound. So last time it crashed. Uh, so let me save it now, <laughs> just, just in case. I save that and call it uh, webcam uh, or, or uh, tutorial 40 something, uh, um, uh, 2020 tutorial 40 something. Save. Okay, we have that. And now let me uh, grab that frequency spectrum again and 
what did we do? We used square root square root on it then we multiplied it by some amount I believe it was a hundred and we ended up with uh, values that were kinda okay yeah I mean they're still below zero but what if I talk really loud yeah, they, they, they seem to be getting closer to, uh, to 1. Actually, we can check it with bounds. Uh, we can check the minimum and maximum value that we're getting. So from somewhere between... Wait, let me shut up now. And now let me talk real, high, uh, real, real loud. Okay, so somewhere between 0 and 3. Um, that's good. Because now what we can do is we can make, uh, let's call this installation a mirror, you know, like panel mechanical mirror, and let's make it shy, right? <laughs> uh, you'll see what I, what I mean. So we have this, and what if we add, use ma we use mass addition to all of the values, um, and on the spectrum, yeah, yeah, bzz, bzz. and then we get. Wait, let's let's keep quiet, and let's now talk loud. Okay, so we are when I talk loud, we go beyond a hundred. Okay, that's good to know because now with these values, I can uh, check it are is the mass addition of all of the peaks higher, larger than 100. Let's do 101, uh, just, just, just in case. So is it larger than 100? And then I can just, with a panel, I can check. So now it's false. But if I talk loud, it becomes true. Nice. Test. Hmm. OK, it needs to be a little bit more 95. Test. There we go. So it turns to true just for a tiny bit. That's good because that means we can... What does it mean? It means we can do a filter, stream filter, and we can feed in that true or false statement into the uh, index, uh, like the, the gate index input. So every time when I... Actually, I can show you. Uh, with a panel, I'll write uh, not loud. And I can write loud here. And I can check the output. So now it's not loud, right? Because I'm talking really quietly. But if I start talking loudly, it will say that it's too loud. Right? So it's, um, I'm trying to make a, a mirror that is shy, and every time when you shout at it, it will, uh, <laughs> every time when you shout at it, it will um, uh, turn, turn itself off, right? So let's, let's see how, how that would work. Here we have the angles, right? So if it's not loud, and how do I organize this actually? So the background plate can just go somewhere here. It's, it's done, it, it, it's unnecessary. Then we have the filter, which is very important. And it needs to be somewhere next to the angle because it, it is feeding, it will need to feed into the angle. So I need to disconnect that right now. And so the output of the filter, this guy right here, will feed into the angle, like so. Okay. Um, and that means that when it's not loud, it will act like the angles are going to be uh, coming from the webcam. But when it's loud, it will turn itself off. So turning uh, itself off is kind of boring. Let's create some sort of a pattern. 
Uh, so let me disable that, uh, or rather completely disable that. Uh, let's create some sort of a pattern, uh, which would be pretty uh, indicative that the window is scared. <laughs> or not the window, sorry, the mirror is scared. So let me go to the front view here. Now let me draw something. Uh, let me just grab some polylines and let me just do X like that. Oh, actually, I, I can just draw another one like that. It's a little bit laggy, but that's fine. So maybe they can be a little bit closer to X's. And then I'll grab a, a curve tool and just draw some sort of a some sort of a smiley face like that. Um, right. So how do we work with that? Oh my God, you are so laggy. Uh, let me turn off the sound capture and let me turn off the webcam capture so that uh, I, I can work properly and turn on this, this bad boy here. So we need these curves to be, of course, in Rhino, uh, in Grasshopper, CRV, referencing, set multiple curves, set those bad boys. There we go and hide them in Rhino. So we have them here. Actually, I'll just uh, internalize data and show, and I'll just delete them from Rhino so that they are internalized in this component. Um, all right, and then I have a bunch of points here. So what I can do is I can pull, uh, pull point, uh, pull these points to these curves, thus getting distances. Right from each point uh, that's closest to the curve, I will get a distance. Um, I can actually visualize it by doing line. Oh, that's wrong. Uh, line between the pulled points and the original ones. Right. So I'm, these lines here, I am measuring these distances. Right. Okay. So I have these distances, and I want to remap. Uh, remap those distances according to the smallest distance needs to become zero and the largest needs to become one. So I will remap according to bounds. Bounds. Um, that's my source domain and my target domain is going to be between zero and one. So we have that done. Uh, all of the distances were remapped to be between uh, zero and one. That's cool. Um, boom, 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 boom. Then I will use a graph mapper. I really like my graph mappers to basically mess around with the fall off of how fast the distances increase or decrease, or rather right now they're not distances anymore. They're just numbers. How fast they increase or decrease. And then I use a uh, uh, remap remap numbers again, but this time I will be remapping to degrees. So where the distance is smallest, the degree needs to, it needs to be open or closed, open or closed. It needs to be opened, I think. Yes, it needs to be opened, which means the degree needs to be 90. No, opened is zero degrees of rotation. And then when it's closed, it's 90. So 0 to 90, like that. Perfect. Um, yeah, let's try it out. So I will connect my result straight into degrees just to check. And if it works, then I will be connecting it to my one input of the filter. Yeah, it works. OK, cool. Uh, it does work. It is a little bit too uh, soft. So that's why I created the graph mapper. I'll right click on it, choose graph types, and I'll choose Bezier curve. And I will just make it much steeper. 
something like that maybe. Yeah, I think that's cool. Looks almost, if, if we zoom out, looks almost glowy, <laughs> glowing. That's cool. Okay, so we have that done, and this is going to be my um, uh, scared uh, mirror. So that's my scared mirror, and that's just my uh, webcam capture and mirror creation. It's a little bit messy, but uh, it is what it is. Okay, so when the mirror is not scared, the filter will give us zero. When the mirror is scared, the filter will give us one, right? And then one will come into my, uh, sorry, the output of the filter. Oh, and uh, bleh, bleh. let's try again. When the filter is, uh, when the mirror is not scared, the filter will parse the information from this graph mapper, which comes from the webcam, right? Actually, I can uh, enable the webcam and pause it immediately. Um, and then when the filter is, when it's loud and the mirror gets scared, so let me enable this, then the, this filter component will parse information from input one, which is going to be my scared mirror pattern here. So let me now, I believe this will work. Let me now just connect and try. Okay, so this is, uh, right now it's not animating, that's fine, and I'm talking uh, a little bit more quietly uh, in, on purpose. But now if I talk really loudly, voila, great. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, 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 stop, stop being scared. Uh, that's super, uh, that means it works. It's a little bit hard to make it um, scared, so this slider right here, this guy right here, is basically um, how brave is the mirror. Ooh, this is laggy. How brave is the mirror? And basically we can just say if we turn it down to 85, then I don't really need to talk that loudly, that loudly, yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be become scared much easier. If I turn this to 50, then it's almost all the time being scared. Okay, so let's jump to 85, I think, was, was the kind of okay. Um, one more thing before we kind of wrap up here and check, you know, test this out. And that thing is when the mirror gets scared, it stays scared for a very short period of time. I want to have a possibility on controlling, at least slightly controlling how long, um, for how long does it stay scared? So let's see, how do we do that? Ugh. Well, I know. What if we, what if we record, use record data or data recorder? Ah. Data recorder. What if we use data recorder and we record past twenty? So uh, I right click on it and I choose record limit and I choose past, uh, let's say 20 uh, values, right? So then what it will do, if I grab a panel and put it here, what it will do is if I parse uh, the, the mass addition here, it's going to keep recording the values. And once it, once it reaches 20, it will start, you know, kind of removing last values from the list. So if I yell really loudly, so now, sorry for the headphone users, yelling. Yeah, there, there it is, 163, it's moving up. Okay, so we have that 163 in there, meaning that now I can say, from this, always give me 
um, sort this list, please. Sort this list from smallest to highest. Reverse this list, or I can actually um, just right click on the K output and choose to reverse here. So reverse this list and give me the highest number, list item. Give me the highest number, like that. Plug that one in here instead of the result. And now it should work more nicely. So let's try. Boo. Yeah, that works. That works. It gets scared for a while and then it stops being scared. <laughs> nice. Uh, maybe that's a little bit too long. So let me right click on the recorder and choose record limit. Let me set it to something a little bit more reasonable, like 12. Let's try again. Boo! Yeah, that's, that's fine. That seems fine. Oh, it's a little bit shaky though. But that's, that's okay. So, we do have our working definition. Let me press play here so that it actually animates. Nice. And let's, let's mess around, right? So let's see. Can you see me? No, you can't. Let me just mess around with the camera a bit. Uh, eh. There we go. That's me. Yes, hello. Um, Let's try higher ISO, like that. Um, bum, 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 bum. It became really dark really fast. Oh uh, wait, let me turn on some lights. Like that, like that. Oh, this is super. Boom! <laughs> nice. Works. Works like a charm. Oh, this is now really bright. Let me turn away the, the light here. Um, and balance out the, the ISO value on my camera as well. Yeah, yeah, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Or it's going to be okay. You're very, uh, very much of a scaredy cat. <laughs> All right, I think we are done. All right? What else is there to do? Maybe, uh, maybe I need to do this without the webcam being visible. Just, just with this. Or rather, not even this, but in perspective view. I wonder if Arctic view will lag. Probably it will, right? Hello? Oh, that is super laggy. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Back to shade that, please, please don't crash. Please don't crash, please don't crash. I take it back, I take it back. Shade that. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Look at those hexagons rotating. It's nice. So I hope you wait. Probably need to move back a bit so that you can see me. There we go. So this kind of a tool is really useful when you want to do art installations, you know, like interactive arts installations and stuff like that. And uh, you probably want to, yeah, uh, or, or something like that. And 
of course, this kind of a panel system would cost quite a lot uh, to, to, to do uh, in, in reality, but there are some examples where it's, it's achieved and where it's, it has been done. And this should be like, the, the purpose of this tutorial is just to show you the first phase, like first step on how you can actually, let's, let's do it properly. Huh? Huh? There we go. Talking head. Uh, so the purpose of this tutorial is to actually <clears throat> show you uh, the first steps on what needs to be done to be able to kind of build up your, your own arts installation from it. So right now I show this with <laughs> I show this with uh, hexagons. Um, just rotating hexagons, but it can be anything you want. And I only showed you like a few changes, like uh, color contrast, uh, saturation, brightness, and so on. But I didn't show you, uh, for instance, motion capture, uh, which is also possible to do uh, with, with Firefly. So basically you are just limited by your imagination on what yeah stop being so freaking scared i'm trying to do a decent outro here wait let me talk with this guy be more brave uh 100 there we go uh <laughs> sorry about that the mirror is being a bitch so where was i the files, as per usual, are going to be in, available for the Patreon support of the channel. So if, if you would like to support the channel, check out the link in the video description below. And I really hope you enjoy this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.